Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Man! Let's head on back to the Woods of Mystery to rescue Koume again, now that we've gotten everything taken care of in the swamp here. And there's something else that I want to show you while we're over there. So that's why I'm doing this on screen, actually. Alright, let's get the bunny hood back on, and I want to equip, or get, get the Mask of Sense ready to go so we can put that to use and i want to advance the time today or day two while i'm here because if you go to the potion shop and then try to play the song of double time katake won't leave immediately although you might be able to get her to leave by entering and leaving the woods of mystery uh, i forget exactly how the sequence trigger works there but just play it before you get over here and then she'll leave before uh, well yeah before we get before we can get there that is and let's see we don't need to worry about the monkey this time around I mean you could but I'm not gonna because I already know the path to get through there so yeah you don't need the monkey to get through here if you know where to go Okay, so let's see. I equipped the Mask of Sense there. It works automatically. You don't need to press a button or anything once you've got it equipped. And you can find some items with it. Let's see. Haha! -ha! Yeah, so you can see that purple cloud of smoke there. And that indicates, yeah, you got a magic mushroom, which could be used to... Uh, what was it? Uh, to create a potion. But, uh... I'm not going to be using it right now. So, yeah, let's just get rid of that. I do need an empty bottle coming up here, so that way I can get another red potion. So you don't get, like, another bottle for coming back here or any again like that. But, uh, no. I don't have anything for you. Sorry. You're screwed! But no, I want to... You have to talk to her in order to get Katake to... Whoa! To give you a potion. I didn't think uh, those snappers could roll that far into the tunnels. But yeah, all the dialogue is the same as before, so just skim through that. You can go on home. Why are you flying around on a broom if you can just teleport anyway? Seems kind of redundant. But anyway, okay, yeah, got the potion. Let's give that to her. I wonder if a blue potion would work for this side quest. Because, I mean, she just needs something that gives her energy. I mean, blue potion would be much more expensive. Or maybe I'm thinking of another quest. There's a couple side quests where they say, Hey, give me a red potion or whatever. But uh, I thought one of them, or maybe all of them, I don't know. Maybe they can... Maybe uh, blue potion would work for them. I don't know. I mean, there's really no reason to use it. But all right, we're done here. So yeah, we wanted to rescue Kome again to get another boat ride. But since the swamp is also cleared up and we have the hero's bow, there's something else that we can do with her now. So let's head on over there then for the toughest mini game of them all. At least in the Nintendo 64 version. In this version of the game, not so much. Just because the analog stick is just so sensitive on a Nintendo 64 controller. But uh, in this version, it's much... The motion or the gyroscope really helps with that a lot. Oh, that sounds rather dangerous. But, sure, why not? I don't mind tapping that ass. Oh, right, right. You, I think you can hit her up to, what is it, ten times, I think? But once you get the tenth time, then the minigame ends right away. So, don't do that. Instead, let's see, let's get our bow going and hit the target there. So, you have unlimited arrows for the minigame. So you don't need to worry about that. Just hit the target, 
as many times as you can. And then I want to move the camera a little bit with the circle pad because when you make a turn like that, you'll always be facing forward and the camera won't necessarily change to compensate for your turning there. So it might be really hard to turn around there like that. Whoop, try that again. There we go. Yeah, I gotta move the camera around a little bit. Yeah, I can only move the camera so far to the left and the right. You only need to hit the target 20 times to win the prize that I want. So, in this version of the game, that's not too extraordinary. But in the Nintendo 64 version, that would be... I'm lucky if I get 20 at all with that one. But it's just... Yeah, it's just... Ex it's really, really difficult for me. Since I'm not used to the precision or the sensitivity of the analog stick there okay let's try that again there we go so basically you want to aim your arrow so that your the arrow is t touching the bottom of the target there and then you'll be good if i can get a shot in there there we go hmm not doing as good as I usually do on this minigame, I think. I think my PB is 38 targets hit. That's... But, yeah, for this... Well, we still got a little more ways to go. Not too much. But, yeah, you'll end up right back where we started by the time we get to the end of this place. So... But, better to be careful and at least get the 20 targets that I want than to, uh lose altogether. Come on, one more. Ah. Oh, well. Still, eh, better than I thought I'd do. But alright, so, for hitting at least 20 targets, we get another empty bottle. Hooray! Now, in the Nintendo 64 version of the game, you actually get a, a piece of heart here. So, this side quest switches around the rewards with another side quest later on so if you're playing that version you only got one bottle don't worry about it you'll be fine and you'll still get all the heart pieces with what i'm gonna do in the lp regardless this game actually has like 52 heart pieces i think that's the most in any zelda game even now oh wait i was about to uh go somewhere but no no i actually we got more archery mini games to take care of. So let's see. How about we save here first? Because the next one, yeah, it's, I think it's pretty easy, but we'll see what we can do. So let's see. The next mini game I want to do is at the shooting gallery in the swamp here. So let's head on over there and check it out. There's also something else there in the. 3DS version of the game. So let's see. Yeah, right over there. What do we got? Oh, okay. Well, I'll just tell you. This place is a fishing place. It basically gives you the fishing minigame from Ocarina of Time. But there's no, like, real reward for doing it. Not even in the Bomber's Notebook. So, yeah, there's no point in doing that. But, uh, yeah, make sure you've got 40 rupees coming here, because we're going to need to play this game a couple times, actually. So, let's see what we can do. So, let's see. Right off the bat, we're going to have some Deku Scrubs to hit. There's going to be five of them. Then there's one up there. And one up there. Those two never respawn. But these Deku Scrubs will. Now, once you've just er, killed three crows, a wolf ghost will show up. So make sure to hit that right away. Once you've killed those five Deku Scrubs, another wolf ghost shows up. And then, let's see, more crows. So once you destroy or er, kill these three, another wolf ghost will show up in the back there. 
And then, yeah, Deku Scrubs respawn. And then, let's see, some more crows somewhere. There you are. Yeah, these ones don't all fly in a line, though. So, they can be a little tricky. But, uh, nothing we can't handle. Got that, and another Wolfos. Let's see, what else do we got? More crows there. There we go, and another Wolfos. Now, if you don't kill the Wolfos right away, it'll stop between the third and the fourth. Uh, Deku Scrub there, briefly, so you can get another chance to shoot it there. But for getting a perfect score of 2120, the time bonus you get on there doesn't matter. But yeah, that, the perfect score is for hitting all the targets there, 2120. And we get, hey, all right, a large or big quiver, whatever. So and you need to have the hero's bow in order for the mini game to, well, become available. But there's another prize that we can win by doing this again. And I don't think there's actually a difference between the first and the second time you do this mini game, but all right. So yeah, everything's in the same order as before. If you don't kill those five Deku Scrubs on the first try or quickly enough, they will eventually sink back into the ground there. So, but they'll pop out again eventually. That's, hmm. I don't know why I couldn't get that Deku Scrub there. Well, it'll come out again. There we go. Yeah, the, whenever you defeat 10 Deku Scrubs, the Wolfos will pop out up front there. But if you kill the three crows, the Wolfos appears in the back there. So just be aware of that when you're getting ready to defeat the Wolfos there. Okay, this one's in the back. And, okay, five more Deku Scrubs. That's... Again, just like the previous minigame there, you have unlimited arrows, so no need to worry about, you know, running out or anything. Phew! And then... Alright, phew! Getting a little uh, dicey there, but, uh... No, nah, we got it, we got it. So yeah, that is one thing you might want to watch out for during this minigame, is uh, defeating three crows and ten Deku Scrubs, like back to back like that, because that could pr provide you with more targets than you might be able to hit in time. But alright, for winning it again, we get a piece of heart. Hooray! Okay, we're done with our business here. Let's head on back to Clock Town, then. There's another uh, archery, get, get, or what is it, shooting gallery over here. And this one, I think, is pretty easy, too. But we'll see what we can do. So, yeah, let's just save here, just in case. All right, let's uh, get going over there, just like... Most of the mini games in Clock Town, uh, yeah, they're in East Clock Town. So let's head on over there then. It doesn't matter what day you come here to do this. So and just like before, we're gonna have to play a mini game a couple times in order to uh, do this. That is. Hey, hey, all right. Sounds like a plan. So here, we've got some Octorox to shoot. You only want to shoot the red ones, not the blue ones. The blue ones will cost you time on the clock there. But otherwise, these guys will sink into the water eventually if you don't kill them quickly enough. Especially if there's like four or five of them for you to shoot. So you want to watch out for that. But usually there's three or four. Five can be a little tricky to deal with. Only three on that one. And the formation of the Octorax are the same every time. 
And sometimes they'll hide behind each other, but you'll never see, like, a red Actorak hiding behind a blue Actorak in the same column. Whew! Barely got that one. That's the hardest one. With the five targets you gotta hit there. And let's see, there's a total of 50 targets for you to hit. And let's see, okay, next one. When you've got three Octorox in a column like that, you want to slow it down just a little bit so you don't hit the same Octorox multiple times, and then you might lose some time there. But uh, we made it, barely. In the Nintendo 64 version, I think they give you a lot more time for the minigame. So, like, what a speedrun would do would... In would be to intentionally hit some of those blue Actorax there. So they give you a bit more leeway in that version than this one. But still, I mean, it's not hard to avoid hitting the blue Actorax there. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of glossed over what he's telling you about hitting all those Actorax there. So let's see if we can match the score again. And... The formation is the same, just like the other one. So, don't worry about it. You could, like, memorize where the Actorax are from one part to another. Or from one group to another. They're, they're always going to show up in the same order there. Okay, I think we got a five coming up here. So, yeah, hitting five targets, you basically can't miss one of them, or you're screwed. Yeah, so just hit these three in the column there in a rhythm like that, and you'll be fine. Oops. Yeah, I meant to go all the way to the left first, so I wouldn't have to swing back around, but, uh, well, it worked out anyway, so... I usually like to go from left to right. That's just my personal preference. But you can do it however you want. There we go. So yeah, this mini game not so difficult. And the last one, too. The, uh, the shooting galleries are relatively easy in the 3DS version. Well, in either version of the game. They're much easier than the one with Kaume there. Holy cow, that one took me forever to get through there. But, uh, oh. You know, I was going to play the Song of Time because I do need it to be day one coming up here for my next goals there. But, yeah, I've got rupees. So, let's deposit those. Not that it'll really make that much of a difference there. But we might as well. So, yeah, just deposit all those. And how are we looking on our inventory? All right, yeah, I think we're good to go there. So, yeah, let's play the Song of Time, get everything back to day one. And let's see, there's nothing else I'm going to do in Clock Town right away. Now, remember, in the 3DS version, the Song of Time does not save your game. The only way you can do that is saving a, an owl or a quill statue there. But otherwise, everything's basically the same. I do want to... Uh, what was that? I do want to play the inverted Song of Time immediately after, because that all gets reset once you play the Song of Time. Oh, okay. So yeah, whenever you do play the Song of Time... I almost said Navi again, but no. Uh, Tattle will tell you uh, w what the next major objective is. And, well, that would be the mountains to the north there. I mean, we could have tried going over there before, but, well, something would have been in our way when you, well, when you get there. So you wouldn't have been able to go there before going to the Woodfall Temple, at least not without a major glitch. So how do, we, how do we get into the mountains to the north? Find out next time on Let's Play Majora's Mask. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.